Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, as you can probably tell, we're going to be doing a makeup collection video. So I've got all my powders to show you, my loose and my pressed. I should mention that the editing of this video is going to be a little bit choppy because again, I thought I was going to be, I don't know, doing more in this video. And so I have a whole category kind of between my pressed and my loose. Anyway, it's going to seem a little bit choppy. I apologize. So if you're interested in seeing all of my powders, then just keep on watching. Let's go into the pressed powders now. So I have my um, trusty Charlotte Tilbury um, powder here and a friend of mine wasn't using hers. So she gave me hers for when I run out. So I have a backup here. I have the NARS uh, crystal setting powder. I love this powder. I have this uh, limited edition um, Guerlain terracotta gold light. And I showed this in my Guerlain video. This lid just pops off and there's like this beautiful highlighty bronzy gold color it's so pretty um i wonder if i should keep this in my highlighters actually there's no room down there so i'm going to keep this here <laughs> um i have my la mer press powder which i love i have it in the shade light 12. really love this powder i have a tom ford translucent finishing powder into ivory fawn this is also a lovely powder that um, i haven't really been using that often so i need to whip that out here is the Decorte Soft Perfecting Powder. This powder did not work for me at all. I'm just kind of holding on to it because I'm hoping I can make it work one day or I'll take it out again and I'll fall in love with it. So I'm gonna hold on to this, but I did not like it the first few times I used it. And then here's the Lila B Powder Foundation. This is a very, very lovely powder foundation. I like how silky smooth it is and I have it in B Natural, and I kind of, I use it more, because it's so sheer, I kind of use it as a, just a regular pressed powder versus um, a foundation powder, but you can use it as both. And then I have the Bobbi Brown Nude Finish Illuminating Powder. This was raved about by um, Murray on A Little Bit Etc. I think Puffin's Wife also liked this. So I found this at my CCO and decided to purchase it but haven't given it a shot yet, so I have to do that. Here's that um, very interesting YSL uh, product. This is Touche Clop Blur Perfector. So it's like this cream to powder product. So you can use this to kind of powder your makeup, but it goes on as a cream. It's just, it's just very, very interesting. Um, but it's nice if you want to lay it down first and use it kind of as a primer, because it has a very like interesting smoothing effect. Um, so I've actually, I've had this for a while, but it still seems okay. The texture of it still seems okay. So I'm going to hold on to this. I don't use it often, but you never know. And here's the Victoria Beckham Estee Lauder Skin Perfecting Powder. I do not like this powder at all. It is very, very hard pressed. It's, it's not even that it's developed hard pan because there's no hard pan on there. It's just super, super hard pressed and you can't pick up any powder. It's just very annoying. I've tried brushes, I've tried scraping the top off. As soon as I put another brush in there, it's just hard to pick up. So I'm holding on to it just because I like this compact. <laughs> and then we have a Giorgio Armani um, powder foundation. I have it in 4.5 and I love, love this powder foundation. It is wonderful. It's, it has a bit more coverage than the Kogendo, but it has less coverage than the Ket. So it's somewhere in between and it has a really, really soft, silky texture to it. This powder I've actually had for a very long time, not this actual powder, but I've been using this powder for a very long time. And this I think is like my third one. I used to use this all the time and I just haven't used it lately, but I do love it a lot. And then here is the uh, Surratt Loose Powder. It comes with this puff and then it almost looks like a cushion foundation. It has this flip up and then there's a net and then the powder is in there. I do like this powder, I just don't like this packaging. It's very, very messy, so I don't reach for it that often. And this doesn't click shut, this just sort of lays on top, so I don't even want to travel with it. So as much as I like this powder, I just don't use it that often. Oh, my Chantecai, uh HD powder, love this powder. It's so silky smooth, so, so silky smooth. It's beautiful, it's a great, great setting powder. And then I have this Wet n Wild press powder in Warm Light. Uh, this powder's okay. It's um, it's a little bit drying, and it doesn't really kind of stay effective all day. It's just, it's okay. 
it's not great. And then I have this uh, like travel size of this Laura Mercier um, translucent setting powder. I think I'm the only person in the entire world that does not like this. This powder looks way, way too heavy and thick on my skin. And I just hold on to it, hoping that it will work for me one day. <laughs> but um, this doesn't even belong in this drawer. This actually belongs in my loose powder drawer. So you'll probably see this again when I go through my, my loose powders. So that's it for my um, pressed powders. So I think what I'm gonna do is just put all this back and then we can go down to the next drawer. So I think what I'll show you next is uh, my loose powders and they are sitting in this acrylic drawer organizer which is on top of the Ikea uh, drawers. So, oh actually I have three sitting up here because I have the um, Marc Jacobs finish line. This is like that coconut setting powder and then I have the By Terry Hyaluronic powder and then I have the Hourglass Veil Translucent powder. These did not really work out for me. This one made my makeup just look really thick. This one I thought was a little bit too drying as I thought this one too. So I'm actually gonna hand these over to Risa Does Makeup because she has a very different skin type than I do and I think that they would probably work a lot better for her than for me. So um, I just set these aside to give to her. And then I have um, two of the Guerlain Meteorites. I have the Doré, which is the darkest. And then I have um, medium, it's like this. And then I have the limited edition gold pearl meteorites that comes in this golden orb. And the meteorites looks like this. Super pretty as highlighter. Then I have the um, Clay de Peau loose powder, which I love. The Chanel loose powder, which is great. I have this in shade 20 Claire. This is great for um, just a very natural finish. Uh, setting or finishing. Uh, here is the Chantecaille Talc Free Loose Powder. This is also great for both setting and finishing and it has a little bit, teensy bit more luminosity than the Chanel. And then here is the YSL um, Souffle D'Eclat. I have it in one of the shades, I'm not sure, I guess 02. And this is a lovely um, powder as well. It has a little bit of sparkle in there, very little bit of sparkle, so I do prefer this as a finishing powder. Just mentioned the Surratt and the Laura Mercier. And then I have the Sicily Loose Face Powder in One Irise. This is a lovely powder. This took me a while to kind of come around to as a, as a setting powder. Did not like it all. Um, as a finishing powder, I just like it kind of like on my cheeks and my forehead. I don't like it around my nose or around um, like oilier parts of my face because I feel like it starts to look really thick, but this looks great on my cheeks. Uh, the Viseart Seamless Setting Powder. This is a great setting powder. It's super smooth. It blurs fine lines. It really, really sets down your concealer without looking dry. I really like this one. The Giorgio Armani um, Universal Nude Microfill Loose Powder. I did not really like this powder. I'm gonna keep, keep working on it, but it is extremely sparkly, which I'm not a fan of. It's even more sparkly, I think, than the Sicily, which is like as sparkly as I can get for like loose powder. And then the original La Mer, which I won't even talk about because this is not in production anymore. Um, I have the Becca Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder. This is okay. I like it, but it's not my favorite. I like the Viseart um, more uh, for for this kind of powder, this sort of like brightening white powder. Um, and I like a number of my other setting powders more than this, like the Clay de Peau, um, even the Chanel um, and the Chantecaille, I like more than this. And then here is the Becca Soft Light Blurring Powder. This one is okay. This one does actually do a pretty good job blurring. Um, there is quite a tint to this though. Let me try to open it. So it's very, very peachy, which I happen to like. It kind of goes really well on my skin tone, but I've heard people kind of complain about it. But I like this one. I need to actually take this out and use it more. And then the Cover Effects Translucent Light Perfect Setting Powder. This is actually a lovely powder as well. I haven't used it that often because I have so much powder, uh, but this is a really lovely uh, setting powder as well.
All right, so those are all of my loose powders, pressed powders. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you are into um, collection videos. I will definitely be posting the rest of my collection, and I will see you guys soon.